So far, patch 1.8.0 has been mostly great, sans the crafting unlock debacle. But what about the chunky section about skill XP changes? In today's video, we will be looking at 20 hours worth of testing and data analysis to see exactly how things work now and how to best use them to our advantage. Let's ease into it, starting with scouting. According to Tail Worlds, we can now gain XP by moving quickly and with more troops on the campaign map. Unfortunately, it's not quite the full truth. It's like telling your wife you didn't check that that girl out, but leaving the part out where you were looking at her smoking hot friends. For the testing, we start by checking the previous XP gain mechanics of spotting tracks and spotting hideouts. Sure enough, we still get a small amount of XP from tracks and 100 XP flat per hideout. Prior to 1.8, hideouts only gave 50 XP, so this will be a good boost in the early game since getting past the early levels is challenging. Now let's test the patch note changes. The far south of the map is perfect because we won't be getting interference from scouting tracks and any XP gain will solely be from moving. I tested with and without a horse and got no XP gain for both. Next we add 50 foot troops without inventory mounts and again receive no XP. Adding in our horse and a mount for each troop to ride resulted in... nope, still no XP. Our movement speed is at 5, so it's pretty fast. Finally, we swap foot troops for 50 cavalry units and test again. Sure enough, no XP, and our movement speed is at 5.9, certainly fast enough to qualify one would think. Not ready to give up on Tail Worlds just yet, I headed to the northeast in a secluded forest near Kazate Lands. Again, there should be no interference from track spotting up here. Going solo did indeed grant XP, so they weren't lying, but simply forgot to include the part about it being for very specific terrain types. Let's look at the data from about 50 tests to try to decipher the Tail Worlds math behind it. It seems there is a minimum movement speed threshold that once you go below it, XP drops to zero. These foot troops without mounts ran at 3.2 movement speed, but yielded no XP. Giving them all mounts boosted their speed up to 4.2, and XP was in the 200 range. As we remove some of the mounts, XP begins to drop off. It seems that 3.5 and lower is the cutoff. If we add more troops, our overall speed reduces, which in turn lowers the XP gain. Then, something interesting happened. I was repeating the exact same test, but was getting half the XP and the following test got zero. It turns out, once the snow movement speed debuff hits your party, your scouting XP goes to zero, even if movement speed is still above 3.5. I sure hope this was not an intended mechanic and gets patched out. Now we swap out our foot troops for cavalry and test the same runs. There is very little difference at 51 troops, but looking at 101, there is a huge difference. 365 versus 190. While increasing the troop count does increase the overall XP gain, we do run into diminishing returns since the lower movement speed offsets the larger numbers. It seems the largest party of cavalry only units we can field before XP drops off is around the 350 to 375 mark, which results in 782 XP. I know some of you are yelling into your screen. What about Batania's cultural bonus? Does it work? Yes, my friends, the bonus indeed works. I ran several tests at 201 units to compare and return between 485 and 558 XP, which is in contrast to the 400 XP that other cultures give. I also ran a final test going across the map from Kazate Lands to Vlandia to see how much XP gain there would be. We went from level 250 to 252 for a grand total of 10,619 base XP. Not bad at all. I'm very happy with these changes. Now before we move on, let's recap the key points. Scouting XP is still earned the same way as before, but now has the added bonus of forest travel XP gain. You earn more XP with a higher movement speed and to a slight degree more troops. To get the most XP possible, travel with a pack of only cavalry, 350 to 375 units, and don't allow any movement speed debuffs from inventory or animals. You can min-max even further by taking a Batanian cultured main character. One final note, I tested a couple movement speed perks but noticed the little to no difference in XP gain, although it's possible taking several together would help further. Moving on to the next topic, combat XP gain. I'm lumping everything together here, all melee and range types, as well as riding and athletics, since they're very closely related. XP was adjusted to give more for higher tier unit kills, more XP for ranged weapons and athletics, and more riding XP for higher difficulty ranged shots. In the previous guide, I ran hundreds of tests and most melee kills averaged out to 120 XP. In 1.8, for a tier one looter, that XP increases to 138 and was constant for a single hit kill. However, riding and athletics varied quite a lot. Using a swing attack resulted in 84 riding XP, but a thrust attack at the same speed resulted
resulted in 208 XP, more than double. On foot, the same 138 XP was gained for two-handed, but the athletics XP was 156 for a swing and 251 for a thrust attack. Clearly, thrust hits give significantly more XP for riding and athletics but have no impact on weapon XP. Here is the data for the rest of the melee testing. I was able to isolate all tiers of enemies except five and six. The XP does indeed increase with higher tier units, but the increase is actually kind of small, going from 138 at tier one up to 260 for a tier four. Nobles will vary depending on their level, but a level 20 dirt bag, I mean dirthurt, is worth 543 XP, but the satisfaction of destroying him is priceless. It's difficult to see an exact trend in regards to writing and athletics, but the unit tier doesn't seem to have much of an effect on the XP gain. Ranged XP is a bit different, however. In my previous ranged XP guide, I had hundreds of data points showing XP gain between 120 and 330. In 1.8, that range is still roughly the same for tier 1 opponents, but does increase some for higher tier units. For example, a 5 meter one shot kill will net 140 XP at tier 1, but all the way up to 294 for a tier 4 unit. I do have some sad news regarding riding and ranged weapons. In the previous patch, you could earn anywhere from 12 XP up to a ridiculous 3500 XP for a single ranged kill, but it seems they have tempered this a bit with the range now being between 97 and 732. Further testing might increase that range a bit, but there is no doubt that riding XP was nerfed hard. Let's recap the important key points. Regardless of weapon type or mobility type, XP will increase with the unit to your kill. For melee weapons, thrust kills give significantly more XP than swing kills. Ranged kills will give XP for both weapon and mobility based on the difficulty of the shot with distance to the target being the most important factor and headshot coming in next. Relative movement speed seems to make no difference whatsoever for XP gained. Now let's take a look at leadership which saw one of the biggest changes. Previously, it was nearly impossible to level leadership until you could call together an army, but now that's changed. We still have the usual methods, such as recruiting troops from towns and villages, as well as converting prisoners, and these values have not changed. However, when regular troops gain XP, our character also gets leadership XP. I collected data from roughly 30 battles and a few patterns emerged. Auto-resolve battles give less XP on average than fighting them in person. I think this is due to XP not being awarded for hits in auto resolve whereas in person it does. Fighting tier 1 units in auto resolve gave an average of 6.2 XP per kill with a range from 4.9 up to 7.6. I have no clue where the variation could be coming from. Switching over to in person battles we see another big fluctuation. Fighting tier 1 units will net anywhere from 4.5 all the way up to 12. Moving up to tier 2 only we have a much smaller sample size but if we remove the outlier most kills fall into a tight range around 12 to 13 XP each. This was definitely a much needed change as we now have a reliable way to bridge the gap between start of the game and clan tier 2 when we can create an army as a vassal. Once leadership starts to hit the higher levels around 200 plus, this XP won't be enough to level it quickly and creating armies will once again be the go-to method. Some final notes and key takeaways here. If you use the console command a lot for testing like me, be aware that creating units will not gain leadership XP. This one's stumped me for literally two hours before I figured it out. In most tests, I would not get leadership XP from an auto-resolve battle until after I fought one in-person battle. So if you use auto-resolve a lot, be sure to do a quick in-person one first. The XP gain is not tied to the friendly unit tier and will continue to grant leadership XP for units who can no longer earn XP, such as tier 5 or tier 6 units, or those who are waiting to level up still. Bandit units will not grant leadership XP since they changed the roguery XP mechanic, so be sure to get rid of them if you need leadership. Auto resolve gives less XP than fighting in person and higher tier unit kills give more XP. And lastly, let's take a look at roguery. The change here is very similar to leadership in that XP is earned when our bandit troops gain XP. Bandit troops do not generate leadership XP and regular troops do not generate roguery XP. Simple enough. We start our testing off raiding a village. Looking at the data, we can see that some XP is awarded for each kill our bandit troops get and no XP when we remove all of our bandit troops. 
There is no extra XP for raiding a village until hearths start burning off. Completing a full raid still gives 200 to 250 XP, which is totally underwhelming to say the least. Each kill our bandit gets will net us between 45 and 77 XP. If we decide to raid a villager party, we now get more roguery XP for defeating them as well as bandit kill XP. Defeating a villager party will net 265 XP flat, and kill XP by bandit troops will net between 30 and 68. I'm not sure why there's such a big difference. It seems like the more kills you get, the less XP per kill you will earn. And finally, the real way to level up roguery, raiding a caravan. Defeating a 30 unit caravan nets around 5,780 XP plus bandit kill XP. Because the units in a caravan are generally of a higher tier than villagers and militia, the XP gain is more, ranging anywhere from 47 up to 122. In our best run, we earned a total base XP of 8,733. With a max learning rate of 12 and a half, we would be earning a cool 109,000 XP, which is enough to go from level one to level 76 in a single battle. The recap here is short and sweet. You get about 50 to 125 XP per bandit troop kill, 265 XP for attacking villager parties, and 5780 XP for attacking caravans. Regular troop kills will give leadership XP, but no roguery, and bandit troop kills will give roguery, but not leadership. Before we wrap this video up, I wanted to finish with a very short but sweet bonus. I have really good news about stewardship skill XP gain. It has now finally been decoupled from food reduction perks. Before, a 10% reduction to food consumption would also reduce steward XP gain by that same amount, making it significantly harder to reach higher levels. Now, all food reduction perks are fair game. Overall, I'm quite impressed with Tailworld's fixes to skill XP gain. It seems like all these changes were made to make the game less grindy and more accessible from day one. In the case of Roguery, it opens up opportunities to level without having to solely focus on prison breaks. Anytime we have more options in the game, the better the experience will be. In the next video, we will be testing all of the perks that changed in 1.8 and see exactly how or even if they work. Gently caress that like button and keep it classy. See you next time. As we remember...